this is battle report number 66 and in this battle report I am showing up my new project which is Fallen Bretonians. We have Breton knights who after the Bretonian civil war have become without their fiefdom homeless, errant and vagabond if you will and have um, ended up in the chaos waste seeking glory and fortune as well as a good fight. Um, I have then therefore uh, obtained these knights to get some support, magic warlocks uh, who will act as my damsels, some um, artillery beasts who will act as my trebuchet and some archers in this game will be skins and in future games will be um, beastmen and goals with bows that I'm getting ready. So um, yeah, this list is the first one I am, or this army, the first one I am doing from paper first and then building the models for the paper or what's on the paper. So I have um, tailored efficiency cost per model. So there's a lot of points on the list put into uh, units, so I spare the number of models. But I still have a lot of uh, knights in a knight of the realm unit, 12 of them. Um, I have eight Grail Knights, which allow me still to take two trebuchets, and I have six, uh, let's say, fighty characters and two spellcasters of level two. So, quite a lot of, um, quite an elite army, if you will. Not a lot of models. Uh, that's pretty much what you see in front of you. Um, let's see if it works. And, and today I'm playing blind army, and I'm playing against. Chaos Dwarves, which is unfortunate because as you saw in my list uh, in a previous in a presentation, I have a lot of units with flaming attacks. So, not ideal because most of the units in front have ward saves against flaming attacks. My Warlock level 2 Beast gets uh, the Ember Spear and I get Wizard Wild Form as well. The Warlock level 2 of Life gets Fireball with the Ruby Ring, it gets the Dwellers Below and Awakening of the Woods. Not the best uh, spell, but I will pray, I will have the um, Blessing of the Ladies, so losing Dwellers Below for regeneration. I guess I should have, in hindsight, this is the first time I'm playing life on a level 2 like this, um, I should have because it would allow me to get the low attribute on a low um, target for spellcasting. But hindsight is 2020. Deployment is as follows. I have my unit of eight knight errants. Um, there's a unit filler which has counts for four models. I can see there's a dice with a four on it. Um, in there I have put a grail uh, knight with the um, virtue of the impetuous knight which adds a d6 after I do my charge to the, um, the range of the charge. Also my questing knight with a great weapon and a cuirass of fortune which allows him to reroll once to wound. Um, this is really my um, my deterrent. Um, the idea there is I will go and rush his, um, his artillery units in his backfield. Then in the forest is my unit of 10 archers with the stakes and the braziers. Next to that is my unit of 12 Knight of the Realm, in there I have my General, my Lord, who is the White Knight in the front there. Behind him is my BSB, Paladin. On the front right of that unit is a Paladin with a Morning Star, and he's kitted to take duels. So he's got the Gauntlet of Duels, uh, as well as the Virtue of Confidence. And in there is my Level 2 of Beast. Then I have my First Trebuchet. And my unit of Grail Knights, eight of them, in which there is my second lord with the Grail Vow, of course, and the Dragon Helm. Um, in hindsight, yeah, forgot that a lot of uh, his big uh, hitters have flaming attacks, so that guy should have gone solo and pretty much charge and chaff up his lord and maybe the, the good ally. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see how it goes. Uh, and then far right, of course, is my second tribution. Closer look at the Grail Knights. I apologize, this is working process. The Grail Knights have the Crest Helmets. 
so they are easily um, identifiable as well as they have a bit of a slanish tint to themselves uh, as you will possibly see, you cannot see it with this angle but the banner has the uh, icon of slanish and there, I apologize for standing, these kings uh, will act as my archers my opponent deployment, he's got his hobbling lord on his wolf um, pretty much fast calving, so he's vanguarding over there or where he is right now and he will go hunt my um, my rock spitting beasts or my trebuchet he's got his then his hobgobs a the hell cannon which i forgot to put in the list and i'm gonna do that right now um, he's got his lord on the taurus in the back there behind his unit of uh, shooty chaos dwarfs and his uh, fire thrower cannon and on the left, he's got his unit of 20 uh, Chaos Dwarves, his Chaos Dwarf Cannon, which has a special level thing or the two modes of firing, the large template or the single point, pretty nasty. Um, and his Gedai, and that's uh, after his Gedai movement. So we move it like this, because of course I deploy it totally on the right to avoid going to combat with that thing. So in the rest of his movement, he's moving his lord behind the tower, so he's getting some uh, lines of looking for my trebuchet hits, and he's moving his archers like so, as well as his hobgoblins toward the ruins, but not too close. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't know much of the spells uh, from Chaos Dwarf, but he's got this one where he can do uh, a template hit anywhere on the table, and then uh, scatters a bit. It's not high strength, so he doesn't do much in the end. But it's quite a scary prospect in hindsight. We're going to shooting phase, and his fire thrower uh, gets, I think, nine hits on the, the unit of Night Terrans with two characters and kills one. He's a cannon rock thrower thingy, he tries to hit my general unit, but he scatters enough but clips three of the. Uh, of the archers and end up, ends up killing one. And then the hell cannon fires on my general unit again, uh, centers on the warlock to get nine of the knights, scatters the eight inches in nothing over there. And uh, I am quite thankful uh, for a dwarf shooting that was appalling. So, Britannian turn one, and uh, I have. The character was a virtual impetuous knight in there, and I see his lord there, and I'm thinking, right, let's try how these guys do. And uh, I have no idea what the lord is like. Uh, I know he's a riding monster, and that's where it's going to be tough, but, you know, I have two paladins in there. You never know. You never know. I get plus one uh, strength with one on the first turn, and plus two with the one with great weapons. And he's wearing one, two wounds. So it could be interesting. The rest of my army then shuffles. I uh, turn the archers to uh, get a shot at the hobgoblin, who I forgot to mention, darted past everything and put himself right in front of the right mount trebuchet to charge it next turn. My uh, general unit, Knight of Realm, moved up um, next to the tower, offering a cheeky charge to the hobgob. I'm hoping he's gonna take it so I can then. Um, make way with my characters and kick the hell out of that unit back to where they come from and potentially get a charge next turn against one the hell cannon or two I was hoping to be able to click clip the the lord around the tower. But this is where we are. The um so the Grail Knights have the uh, the banner of eternal flame so they're gonna be useless any wound they make will have a 2-up ward save uh, on the Gedai, 2-up uh, ward save on the Lord, and I think a 3-up ward save on the Chaos Dwarves. So the only thing they can really be efficient on is the Obgob, but that's too late. He, he passed the um, Bull Centaurs in front, but they don't seem to be too keen to get into combat, and maybe um, the artillery units. So I gotta move them closer, but I also want to protect or don't allow him to pass by. So placing myself like this, that they have a movement of 
seven or eight, uh, even with a boosted movement, they wouldn't be able to go past my uh, counter charge next turn. Magic phases in this game are not too good compared to the last game with this opponent where we had uh, an average 9 dice per phase. He ends up with about 2 3 dice per phase. Um, I do okay on rolling the dice for the wins of magic. However, you get this item, the chalice of I'm not sure what, which removes d3 from both uh, power dice pools, which isn't good. You know, I don't have much. I think average in this game was 6 dice for me. Uh, so if he rolls high, I only have three and uh, I only have level twos. It's quite big spells, um, so ain't too good. So yeah, nothing really happens in this magic phase. And we go into the shooting. My first trebuchet uh, misfires. The second, however, hits, and that's a uh, hit on the Chaos Dwarf, which is 21 models hit. Causes. 11 wounds, which is average on 21 hits, and 7 kills worth dying, which is not bad. Uh, they pass their moral check and we we'll go into combat. Uh, so the Taurus or the Flying Cow causes a strength for automatic hit at the start of each combat. And re that reminds me of the Fair Enchantress. Um, anyway, to that I lose already one knight, which isn't good. Then I don't have to, so I don't declare a challenge, but he does, and I accept with my uh, paladin, who just spent his uh, virtue of the impetuous knight. And um, yeah, it's not too good. He causes uh, a wound, I uh, know two wounds on the paladins uh, with the uh, the boost and the um, the flying tauren, whatever it is, and um, kills it. So I lose by one, I believe. Uh, and it's a drag I was really hoping to get through or win on combat res and make it break. But um, no, so now I'm gonna probably get flanked on the sides. Um, I still have a character there with Grey Weapon and hopefully we'll be able to hit in next turn or at least get into the challenge. Top of turn 2, so Chaos Dwarfs, the, um, the Blunderbuss, I think they are Blunderbusses, Chaos Dwarfs. Charge in the flank of the knight turns, and uh, I'm not too worried about that. What I'm worried about is on the Gedai. He's got a uh, not, not too too long charge, but he misses by a quarter of an inch. I uh, thought he had it, but um, fortunately I'm not using the right movement tray. So aligning the knights probably uh, properly means that um, he's short of uh, a quarter of an inch. So that's I'll take that. I'll take that. That's uh, maybe um, enough for this unit of knights to survive one more, one more turn. He uh, moves his unit of Chaos Dwarf closer to the action through the forest. Gets the unmissable charge with his Hobgoblin Hero on the trebuchet that was effective last turn. So next turn I uh, probably won't have any trebuchet shooting because of the misfire on the other one. His uh, Bull Centaur unit moves back. Uh, from I believe the grain light or potential close angle charge from my lord unit, and then I remind him, oh, head cannon, we need to do your your moral check, and he fails. He fails and needs to run three d six towards the closest enemy unit, and uh, for him that's um, that's his his knights. He gets very close, which. It kind of blocks me, he charges in his, the flank of his lord, but that's an easy charge on the cannon, and I have a very king blow on that unit, so I am hopeful. Worst case, the hell cannon cannot shoot this turn. Okay, so my bad. Uh, with regard to magic phase previous turn, I see the amount of uh, knights left, or knight of the realm, uh, there in the picture, which are six plus my four characters, which isn't good. So where did the six of the knights went? Well, now I remember, I did cast uh, a spell in my turn 1, it was on 3 dice, I rolled 2, 6, and 5 for Ember Spear, it wasn't the boosted version, and it was aimed at the um, Hell Cannon. Unfortunately I rolled a 1 to wound, um, and then I rolled a 5 for the miscast, and I killed I believe uh, 4 or 5 of my knights, that's why the, uh, the Chariot the unit healer is gone, 
and then in his shooting phase, oh, and then yeah, but he wouldn't own a BSB, he didn't get Lukasa. And then in his shooting phase, he gets a cheeky shot, just clips the last model of the left rank there, uh, visibly here. So we have a, a laser tracer, so you could see that. He does clip it, he shots, he gets a uh, two inch into the unit, which gets night guys and does. Um, uh, several wounds to which I felt two of them. So I end up with six Knight of the Runners left and four characters in that unit, which initially started with 12. In this combat, the um, Lord Chaos Dwarf declares a challenge. I accept with my uh, questing Paladin and his great weapon. And uh, with totally fluff, I uh, cause a couple of wounds, but he passes his armor save. Um, and then the guy on the left, the Blunderbusses, did a few wounds, uh, but the lady protected, and I passed all my war saves. And in the end, we stick around. I believe I, I lost by one, and we stick around. So, Brittany, I turn to. Um, I decided to move my second lord in front of uh, the Hope Goblin the Warfronter, so I keep my, BS, my uh, trebuchet. Shooting for the next turn, he cannot shoot this turn as he misfired on turn one. Of course, pre prior to this, I did charge my um, Knight of the Realm unit into the Hell Cannon. I then also moved the Grail Knights forward onto the hill, providing some support to uh, the Knight of the Realm just in case the uh, uh, Bull Center was decided to charge. So this magic phase is wash. Uh, in combat, I end up causing three wounds to the hell cannon and uh, one of the dwarf handlers perish. In return, he did nothing to me. He's unbreakable and will stick around for another round of combat. As it was unfortunate, no hurricane blow happened this turn. Second round of combat with the questing knight, and unfortunately this time he loses and uh, offers the overkill. So it's full two points. Um, the the knights, however, just stick around. Well, not quite, because I did lose another knight from the combat with the blunderbusses, and I break. I break. Uh, I roll a nine to flee. The blunderbusses roll a 10, so yeah, caught by dwarves, shame on you knights. Um, the blunderbusses end up stopping one inch from the tower, and the, um, the lord on the flying torch ends up a couple of inches next to the knight of the realm. Unit. And here's a closer look at what's happening there, and my only based and uh, base coated models. Top of turn three, his uh, bull centaurs charge the flank of my knight of the realm unit. His uh, Gedai destroyer moves uh, closer to the action. His low positions himself, so he's within 18 inches of his uh, hero on or goblin, so allowing him to uh, roll a um, test to march on his leadership uh, as he is being blocked by my uh, my lord character of the blue there on the top of the table as well as offering a nice straight line for a few spells I'm sure his uh, wolf hobgoblin hero character gets a whooping 18 inches march and uh, blocks my uh, unit like this and that the Grail Knight unit, of course, the one I was supposed to counter charge into the um, uh, Bull Centaurs. His uh, war machines do not have much line of sight, so they take this turn to move around. And so into combat, and wow! So uh, I believe on this turn I kill. Remaining Chaos Dwarf on the Hell Cannon. Uh, the Bull Centers come in, do nothing. I pass my wall saves 
I believe I caused a couple of wounds on that unit. Um, they end up breaking from combat, and of course the hell cannon is unbreakable and sticks around. I do lose, however, one knight for my trouble. And I apologize straight after combat, uh, at the bottom of turn 3. The blue lord there uh, survived shooting, magic shooting from the lord on the flying taurus. Uh, one of my walks used the silver mirror to uh, dispel that, that spell and uh, caused the wound, but he won't save the wound, unfortunately. The, uh, oh no, he almost saved it. I apologize. Then, uh, straight to combat, I eventually did the uh, Harry Killing Blow on the Hell Cannon. Uh, and dispatch it and then reform this way. I wanted to reform more than this, however, uh, that would have potentially provided a flank charge to the Gedai. I'm not sure I wanted that to happen. Um, the, of course, the Grand Knights make a short work of the uh, Hobgoning and the Wolf. And then I reposition my uh, Blue Lord where he is there to provide some support to the Grand Knights and um, protect or offer a charge onto the, the Lord on the Flying Bull. Magic is a wash again, thanks to that chalice. And in shooting phase, I misfire with the um, trebuchet, so we can shoot this turn and the next. So, top of turn 4, the Gedai Destroyer goes right into the Grey Lines, and I really didn't want that to happen because Grey Lines have the banner of the Eternal Flame. So that Gedai will make me reroll two wounds rolls that are successful and will benefit from a war save to fire attacks. So my only hope is combat res and getting something into combat there. I am hoping I can dispatch his lord with my uh, uh, second lord who has the 80 point cost virtue of heroism, so he's got a hurricane blow there. I'm hoping I can dispatch that lord and then take a flank charge there directly into the Gedai and dispatch it with, well, I guess I need two sixes in, in the row there to um, to get hurricane blow or combat resolution. Either way. My opponent's infantry units move uh, forward. He places his uh, level 2 character over there, so one of his uh, cannon can benefit from uh, some rebels. So that's not the combat phase, that's that's at the end of the magic phase. He, um, what does he cast? He cast a, a direct damage spell onto the my lord unit, directly onto my lord. Oh yeah, it's a snipe spell. So he causes a wound to my general, miscasts, and rolls a 7. So everything but the Sorcerer is hit by a strength 10 template and he causes a wound to my second lord. So, quite a successful uh, spell, if you ask me, on this one. And here's the wound of my general after that snipe spell is off. In his shooting phase, he's trying to use his fire thrower onto the general's unit, but uh, misfires uh, reroll something uh, thanks to the engineer. Oh no, we couldn't because the engineer had to be within 3 inches of it, so he cannot re-roll and he is unable to shoot next turn and this turn. The unit of blunderbusses, who I forgot to mention, went into the tower, shoot at the knight of the realm unit and do nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think I passed all my uh, armor save and my war saves. In combat, however, uh, yeah, at the end of the combat phase with the, um, not the impact hits, but the, uh, I touch you hits at the start of the combat phase, plus all his attacks. He's got three extra attacks this turn. He gets five wounds through. Um, I am still steadfast and I stick around, of course. I do not cause any wound in return. Uh, I knew paladins were a bit challenged, uh, and I really like to play with question knights because of their, um, lasting power over the number of turns. <laughs> However, this is really hard when they are flaming attacks and you're fighting something which is uh, pretty much immune to fire. Bottom of turn 4, um, I got nothing better to do with that general's unit. So I move it over there to get some points. Um, I can get into his Chaos Dwarves, I can get into his War Machine, 
I can go into his own character. So I am hopeful I will uh, get into some action. Or worst case, he charges me, but I have my uh, rank of characters in the front of the unit. So with all this stagnant of opportunity, I, um, I am able to cast a spell this turn and the spear. And I cause three wounds on his uh, character level two. And it's one down, uh, six units to go. <laughs> and the Gedai monster. In combat, oh, and I forgot to mention previous turn. My lord with the second uh, virtue of heroism does not do anything. I hit the character. I um, fluff, literally, I fluff. I cannot get a win through. Uh, on his turn, he fluffs as well. He wins by one or two. Uh, I believe two because he's got a charger on the flank. Um, I stick around. I pass my um, moral check, but I have just a, an eighth, I think, of an inch to pivot and uh, face him, so I mean it's not going to make a big difference, so we played as I couldn't, and there we stand. So yeah, in this turn um, he kills with his Gedai another of uh, my uh, knights, and thank the lady, or thank the uh, the black grail, they stick around. So we're going to um, the top of turn five. He charges his kills dwarf into the front of my uh, knight of the realm. He then moves his unit of bull centers closer to the action, chasing the knight of the realm. In his shooting phase, he gets a hit on. Uh, or he's trying to hit the. Um, the trebuchet that will be able to, to do something this turn at last, but fails to wound him. And in combat, yeah, unfortunately, um, the Gedai destroys the uh, the Grand Knight unit, uh, causes a wound onto the Warlock, but he sticks around incredibly. The um, the Chaos Dwarf Lord and the Centaur, the Bull, uh, ends up killing my Lord, unfortunately. Uh, he gets through his uh, two-up ward save, which we found out in this turn. He didn't reapply, but I, I rolled two ones on the three wounds from the um, the monster and uh, killed my lord, unfortunately, who didn't have the opportunity to place a heroic king go. His lord reforms this way to face the tribution. The combat with my general unit and the kills dwarves uh, we, the Fallen Britannia end up killing three, they kill one, uh, they did have a charge, but we win because we have the banner, the BSB, and uh, we have two extra wounds. Uh, they do not have the steadfast because we have equal number of ranks, and unfortunately they stick around. And this is how the battlefield looks after the end of turn five. Turn six, as expected, the uh, Kills of Lord charges to the trebuchet and uh, with the single re remaining crew member, I just take the trebuchet off because there's no point. Uh, in the charge phase, also, his um, bull centaurs make a charge into the rear of my uh, Knight of the Realm and his Gedai destroyer. Unfortunately, he fails another charge. Kills Dwarf decides not to cast any spell. He's didn't have much need and did not have line of sight. Um, at the end of combat, we cause a wound onto or two wound onto the um, the bull centaurs. They caused uh, three wound and killed the BSB as well as the uh, the warlock. The, the um, knight unit, however, killed four of the uh, chaos dwarves. So we lose by. Four and I pass it on the five without any reroll, which is awesome. And we go straight into the last turn of the game. Um, we end up having the uh, Chaos Dwarf reduced to four models, um, and the Bull Centaurs cannot do anything onto my uh, my characters. Oh yeah, they, they put a wound on the uh, the Green Paladin there with the uh, Morning Star, and that's the end of the game. Um, obviously, the Britannians. The Fallen Breaths fell miserably, 
<laughs> well, not miserably, they fell, they, um, they lose this game. Uh, it was my first game ever against Chaos Dwarfs. They're pretty nasty. They're not too bad, I'd say. Um, my opponent told me uh, at the end that uh, because I played uh, Lizardman last time, he was um, expected to face Lizardman and wasn't really too keen on it because of all the poison attack I had. Um, yeah, Lizardman would have been very useful. Um, I have to say, Teto Echo being able to uh, do a lot of things. I mean, Okay, these these are breads. I really like the playstyle. I'm quite experienced with them. I never played real nice though, so yeah, these I need to have to get used to more. Um, it's hard to play without Pegasus Knights, and um, as uh, Sustainable Center said, the best chaff unit in the game. Um, very expensive though, but no, yeah, yeah, they're really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I do think this is a good build. I mean, the two lords, of course, I take advantage of going over with my heroes by uh, 100 points. Uh, so I'm on 700 points instead of 600 for that 2,400 points army build. But uh, all in all, I think I can manage some games with that, and um, I'm going to try to feel it more. Um, hopefully next time I would have done some progress on the painting. Yeah, it's taking shape. And I'm not sure of the green there for the green knight. I'm not sure where the white of the lord is going to go to. Of course, I want to do some gradient on the the cape and um, and the weapon. Uh, I wanted to keep a um, a white theme on the horse and heraldry, and I'm probably going to do some hand painted. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm I'm going to try. I'm going to try, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, the bases will be. Sort of purple, unfortunately, there I can see that's my uh, finch and dress bases with uh, roses and, and things growing uh, and the wooden theme around that for the forest. So, all this is going to go into some kind of purple, uh, Asian, Ashen Vale type of, um, type of scheme or color scheme. So, we'll see how that pans out. I think I need to do a lot of work on the trebuchet. I mean, they're a cool model, and I'll use them for uh, skull cannons and possibly hand cannons. Although I really hate the way that play, as my opponent's uh, uh, play would have uh, showed in this game. But yeah, this is um, Bretonians versus Chaos Dwarfs, or Fallen Brits versus Chaos Dwarf. Um, Chaos Dwarfs victory by about. I think I had 689 points left on the table, so quite a big win. Uh, I think I only killed less than 400 of these, um, but yeah, it was cool. It's cool, enjoyable game. A uh, lot of uh, interesting, interesting situations. Um, hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Oh, and of course, Merry Christmas and Happy.